jump. We are now entering the up zone. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> it's a mystery. What's up? Can you stole? Oh, you know, like up art, like optical illusion art, where it's something that tricks your eye. But we have a mystery. <laughs> Try to figure it out. We got some tough ones for you, kids. Let's see if we can figure it out. Here, I can chop optical illusion. <laughs> Those who create optical illusions use combinations of colors, lights, or particular patterns that can really trick the brain. So get ready to check your visual perception with this fun challenge. The first one is creepy. This is a famous drawing created in 1892 by Charles Allen Gilbert called All is Vanity. And depending on what you see first, it can come off as a little creepy. Most people who look at it don't even realize that the drawing is much more than it seems. Have you noticed anything unusual about this picture? You have 10 seconds to figure it out. Mmm, very interesting. Mmm, look! I see it! I have figured out the answer! Ha <laughs> ha! Did you figure out the answer? I hope so! Those who look at the drawing notice either a woman sitting in front of the vanity mirror or a spooky-looking skull. If you've managed to spot both of them right away, congratulations! Your visual perception is pretty impressive. Alright, here are hidden faces. Here's another challenging image where you have to find something that's hidden right in plain sight. Now at first glance, mm, it might look way too look? easy. After all, everybody can clearly see at least four faces in the tree branches. But like any optical illusion, there's a catch. See how many more faces you can spot in the next 10 seconds. If you found 10 faces hidden among the branches, then you're an extremely observant individual. Some say that these faces are actually those of famous public figures. Can you recognize anybody? Share your ideas in the comments below. Number 5. The Impossible Triangle Meet the Impossible Triangle. But wait! What makes it so impossible, you say? <laughs> you have 10 seconds to figure it out before you hear the explanation. Let's take a look. Mm, that's tricky. The impossible triangle, known as Penrose Triangle, is so-called because it can never exist in reality. If it did exist, it would be absolutely contrary to the rules of Euclidean geometry. What is so wrong with this figure? Well, if you follow the ball sliding on the surface of the triangle from the top point, you will see that the left side is extending away and the right side is leaning towards you. However, they both seem to be on the same plane. Only an optical illusion makes it seemingly possible to the human eye. Check this out. Here's a grid. Nothing special, just a basic grid. Very gritty. But look closer. Into this white spot at the center, where the two central vertical and horizontal lines intersect. Look very closely. Notice anything funny about this spot? Yeah, nothing. But keep looking. Get weird and stare at it. Now, keeping your gaze fixed on this white spot, check what's happening in your peripheral vision. The other spots, are they still white? 
or do they show weird flashes of gray? Oh, do you see gray dots? I see gray dots! Ah! Now look at this pan for baking muffins. Oh, sorry, one of the cups is inverted. It pops up instead of dipping down. Wait, no, spin the pan. The other five are domed now? Whichever it is, this pan's defective. Here's a photo of Abraham Lincoln. And here's one upside down. Nothing weird going on here. Wait, turn that upside down one right side up. What have they done to Abe? Those are just three optical illusions, images that seem to trick us. How do they work? Are magical things happening in the images themselves? While we could certainly be sneaking flashes of gray into the peripheral white spots of our animated grid, first off, we promise we aren't. You'll see the same effect with a grid printed on a plain old piece of paper. In reality, this grid really is just a grid, but not to your brain's visual system. Here's how it interprets the light information you call this grid. The white intersections are surrounded by relatively more white on all four sides than any white point along a line segment. Your retinal ganglion cells notice that there is more white around the intersections because they are organized to increase contrast with lateral inhibition. Better contrast means it's easier to see the edge of something, and things are what your eyes and brain have evolved to see. Your retinal ganglion cells don't respond as much at the crossings because there is more lateral inhibition from more white spots nearby, compared to the lines which are surrounded by black. This isn't just a defect in your eyes. If you can see, then optical illusions can trick you with your glasses on or with this paper or computer screen right up in your face. What optical illusions show us is the way your photoreceptors and brain assemble visual information into the three-dimensional world you see around you, where edges should get extra attention. Oh, I didn't know that stuff. He's a smart guy, yeah. Before op art became a novelty and a fun thing, op art was an art movement. Op art, or short for optical art, was an art movement that peaked during the 1960s. The political, social, and artistic movements in the 1960s in the United States were tremendous. Op art's been around since the 60s? Whoa! That's old. It's older than Mr. Stone, but he's old. <laughs> op art used geometric forms to create optical effects that fooled the eye. Op art used abstract patterns and high contrast that excited and confused the viewer. A combination of technology, mathematics, psychology, and art. With technological advances of television, computers, and the space race, op art reflected the society. The foreground and background of many pieces were very difficult to discern. Op artists wanted to capture a sense of movement with a stationary 2D artwork. Like many artists in the 1960s, op art questioned the pre-existing rules and traditions of art. The response of I at New York's MoMA in 1965 was the most awesome artwork there was. Here is one of their artists, Victor Barsali. Here is some of his awesome artwork. Look at the colors and the, how the foreground and the background intermixes. Here is an amazing female artist, Bridget Riley, and some of her artwork. Isn't it awesome? What great movement it has. Notice how it even looks like it changes colors. Here is Frank Stella, an amazing artist in his own right, and he incorporated lots of color too. Man, these are awesome. There's actually a Frank Stella at the, the Newfields Museum. Here's an amazing Hispanic op artist, Jesus Rafael Sato. Look at how he uses space and relation in the 3D and 2D dimensions. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Oh, I love that one. That's my favorite. Whoa, that makes my eyes go Google. Wow, these are pretty awesome. Op art gained mainstream popularity through advertisement, album coverage, and fashion. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. And it's the advertisement for golf. Whoa. 
in the Mexico Olympics. That's pretty amazing. And even took over in clothes as the main print pattern. Up art was criticized as a gimmicky trend that wouldn't last. But the movement lost popularity in 1968. But we can still see those techniques and styles used today. Contemporary op artists. Julian Voss Andreas use make sculptures that seem invisible. They're made of hundreds of metal parts stacked on a single plane. That when you walk around, it seems to disappear right in front of you. Now Felix Semper's sculptures are made of layers of paper that are glued together to make a solid sculpture that is carved out of solid mass paper that can be folded and unfolded. Michael Murphy's art appears only when you're standing in the right spot. Otherwise, it looks like a collection of trash or objects. One image is broken up into thousands of small pieces to make a whole picture. The way the parts align into a recognizable image is the result of the parallax effect, which is the apparent movement of an object when positioned from different positions. Now Kevin Perry is a stop motion animator. He's an expert in creating visual illusions. For this he used a mat to create two pieces of footage. It's just an old video trick used by many. Our next artist is named Joe Hill. He creates 3D paintings on the street that creates an illusion of great depth. He starts by painting large blocks of color and he adds detail and highlights to create depth. Natural looking colors give a realistic look. That's amazing artwork, don't you think? Our next artist, John Montaigne sculptures change shape when you rotate it. He builds them entirely out of Legos. It's so cool. Look at that. Matthew Robert Ortiz creates two in one wire sculptures that change as you move. The image you see depends on your perspective. So cool. Tom Dillinger recycles trash into optical illusions. He starts with a wire line and then he starts adding different things with a hot glue gun and string. Very cool. Boom, boom, boom. I lost my hat. Who took my hat? It's another mystery. <laughs> All right, students, it's time for our annual fundraiser project. We're focusing on op art. Now you will be able to choose from many different optical art designs, and it has a how-to sheet that shows you how to create it. Now, none of them are easy, and you can combine more than one, but you get to choose which one you want to do. Now, I prefer that they not be black and white because these could be t-shirts or mugs or anything, so try to use color. But if you want to do a black and white one, I understand too because it does look very cool. All right, students, choose wisely in which one you want to choose. Have fun and take your time. You'll need rulers, pencils, markers, and patience. All right, have fun.